it's 5.30. I'm going to uh, start the uh, Public Works May 12th, 2020 uh, committee meeting. Um, just for clarity to help us in, in this virtual uh, meeting, I'm going to, for attendance, I'll call out names. And if you can say here, that would be great. Uh, those that aren't here can say not here because they're not going to answer. And um, with you, if you can, please keep your, your devices on mute unless, unless speaking. And the other uh, statement that I would like to ask is that um, if you make a, second, a first or a second, that you actually uh, call out your name. So like if I were to say, to make a first, I would say, you know, nominate Wolf kind of thing. Um, that would, that'll definitely help us to take care of the notes. So uh, starting with roll call, um, Alder Persons Decker. Here. Alder Persons Phillips. Here. Alder Persons Savagi, Savagino. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> Alderperson Marcus Savaglio from the 5th District is here. Excellent. Alderperson Sorensen? I'm here. Excellent. Uh, Todd Wolf, Chair, is here. Uh, David Beevil is here. Ryan is here. Joe Curlin is here. And Don Sokolowski is here. Thomas Cameron? Can I see the list? Here remotely. Uh, do we have? Is Jason on the line? Jason, that's a little late. Yep. Thank you. And I think Steve. Steve? Steve yep, I'm here. Perfect. Okay, I believe that's everybody. And John Powers is on too. Oh, oh John. Hi John. hi, John. Sorry. All right. If you could... Pardon? Also, Mike Wilmoth. Oh, we got you, Mike. Yeah, we got you. You you said here before. Thank you. All right, so if you could join me in 1.3 for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation, one nation, Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I got lost because we had the little delay. <laughs> All right. Uh, 1.4, introduction of the committee members and staff. Um, I believe all of us know each other, so we can move on from there. Uh, 2.1, approval of the minutes from April 14th, 2020. Looking for a motion. Marcus Savaglio, District 5, Alderperson, motion to approve. Second. Second. Ryan. Dean. <laughs> oh, come on. Thank you for that, that motion and, and second. Um, all, all in favor? Uh, Alderperson Decker? Aye. Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Marcus? <laughs> Aye. Alderperson Sorensen? Aye. And chair votes aye. Um, any nays? It's approved. All right, 3.1, uh, GO 1, 2021, April 21st, uh, 2020, document 4.1, ordinance reestablishing the break uh, bulkhead line along a portion of Broughton Drive north of the Sheboygan River uh, in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, David, do you want to take that? Yeah, I think that's not on this We had this in committee uh, once before, yes. and we talked about the, the line and, and how it was being described, and uh, we wanted it, basically we talked about, it, we felt it would be more advantageous to represent really what's truly the lakefront as of today, especially with the improvements with the marina and the boat ramp, the boat launch area as well, and, and some of the, the youth boating center. So we had it, we, we went back and we said, let's revise it. What's in front of you tonight is that document, uh, reestablishing that bulkhead line of Lake Michigan along the shoreline, basically establishing 
that section of shore and uh, any navigable waters within that boundary. Uh, so basically, I guess if there, there's included here, there's the, the, the legal description of this new uh, legal description of the bulkhead line as, as is presented, as well as basically diagrams within your packet uh, showing the location now uh, visually, which I think is ultimately a little better uh, for, for everyone's review. Um, so what we would be recommending is um, that the committee recommend to the Common Council to adopt this general ordinance, reestablishing this bulkhead line along the portion of Broughton Drive north uh, of the Sheboygan River in the city of Sheboygan. Thank you, thank you, uh, Director Beeble. Um, I, I definitely remember uh, this situation because we were being conservative when we first were reviewing it and we felt that we should bump it out to capture as much um, as possible. So this is actually still has to go out for approval by the state? Correct, once, once we um, adopt it as the city, then yep. it gets forwarded on to the next approval process, which will be forwarded on to the state. Okay, perfect. Any questions from the committee? Looking for a motion? Motion to approve. Okay, thank you for that motion and support. Um, yeah, all in uh, Alderperson Decker? Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Salagio? Aye. Alderperson Sorensen? Aye. And chair votes aye. Um, it, it's approved. 3.2. Uh, GO 2-2021, May 4th, 2020, document 6.1, ordinance authorizing placement of the stop sign at the southeast corner of North Point Drive and Broughton Drive. This is actually one of one in my neck of the woods that I'm passionate about. Ryan, did you want to talk about it? Director Beeble. Um, since I'm at the mic, yeah. and Ryan and I are right here, he said just go for it. So. Not a problem. <laughs> so, but... but Again, and the item up for consideration tonight is, is adding a stop sign, as you, as you said, Mr. Chairman, at the southeast corner of North Point Drive and Broughton Drive. And, and what, what you have in your packet, again, is a is diagram of the proposed improvement we're going to be looking at. Uh, this is a heavily traveled, uh, popular intersection, but it's uncontrolled. We've added some stop signs, but now at North Point and Broughton, we're looking to do some geometric improvement, putting some uh, curb and gutter and making it a little bit um, more concise and, and, and not so wide open and a free for all, I guess you could call it. So what we're looking to do is do these improve, uh, attached improvements as well as add a stop sign. And uh, again, we would uh, hope that the uh, Public Works Committee would recommend to the Common Council to adopt this general ordinance. Mm. Thank you, Director Beal. This is Ryan Thornton. I'll move for approval. Second, Dean. Excellent. Thank you for that motion and support. I have a question. Yes, Marcus. Um, the uh, the layout here is this uh, done as the most efficient way to have traffic going through here, or is it just meant to be the most um, uh, the most cost effective? Well, to, I'll let Ryan talk, but I know that when Ryan and I were talking about this, this situation here, um, this area is actually being looked at for future for, uh, I believe, a roundabout. Um, but that actually has to go through what I understand is like state approval also. And this is the most cost effective uh, to correct the situation quickly while we um, look forward to a, a roundabout in the future. Uh, the reason that I came forward with this IFC or this this uh, ordinance is the fact that I've had several of the neighbors complaining. They have young children, and obviously knowing this area very well and being close to the lake, there's a lot of traffic, and it's not really a. It's as you look at the at, at the map, you can see that there's multiple streets that come together, and there's really no control, and for pedestrians to walk across the street in any of the directions. <laughs> Um, there isn't a lot of control because of the lack of stop signs. So this is a good, at least I agree with this recommendation 
um, while we wait for additional approval for a future uh, roundabout that'll make it even safer. Does that help you, Marcus? Uh, yeah, uh, I was more concerned. I've, I've walked that intersection and uh, been afraid to drive through the intersection at times. So I get the need for stop signs. I was just a little concerned with if it was our permanent solution with just adding some grass in a kind of looking haphazard way. But I can get behind this, no problem. Okay, thank you. All right, so we have a motion and support. Uh, Alderperson Decker? Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Slot, Marcus? <laughs> Aye. Alderperson Sorensen? Aye. And chair votes aye. Um, it's approved. All right, moving on to 3.3. .3. Ordinance uh, 3 2021, May 4th, 2020, document 6.2. Ordinance creating a no parking zone uh, Wednesday and Thursday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the west side of North. North 9th Street uh, between Ontario Avenue and Erie Avenue. Dave, uh, yeah, th Rebo? this, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This, this ordinance um, creates just a, no, a, a limited no parking zone uh, specifically for Wednesdays and Thursdays as a result of our garbage collection. Um, one of the problems in this area is Wednesdays and Thursdays uh, with the farmer's market in this area and also other patrons uh, and residents, we, we have find it difficult to access this area. And it's just, you know, in front of two properties on the west side, immediately adjacent to Fountain Park. And uh, we looked at this and we feel that this would uh, significantly help the operations. All right, any questions from the committee? Motion to approve. Ryan, I'll move for approval. Mm. I'll, I'll second. <laughs> All right, thank you for that motion and support. Um, Alderperson Decker? Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Marcus? Aye. Alderperson Sorensen? Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion approved. 3.4, uh, Resolution 7, 2021, April 21st, 2020, document 3.7, Resolution authorizing the City Engineer to enter into contract with JT Engineering Inc. for the traffic study regarding the intersections of North 6th Street and New York Avenue. Director Beeble. Yes, um, given this location and uh, the activity in terms of the art center, the, the, the church, as well as the county courthouse, uh, we've, we've also had um, a pedestrian accident with a death and there's been several requests for traffic calming, traffic signals, what can we do? How can we prevent this from ever occurring in the future again? Uh, both the city engineer, Ryan Sazma and myself have worked with JT Engineering. We felt that it would be best to bring someone from the outside to really take a comprehensive look at the traffic issues in this area and study it and give us some some reckon, recommendations. Ultimately, we need to be uh, as safe as possible and create a safe environment for pedestrians as well as, as motorized traffic in the area. But also, we don't want to be so restrictive that it could cause other problems. So we're, we're recommending entering into agreement with, with JT Engineering a traf to do this traffic study. The um, the, the one thing I would just caution is, is given the, the current conditions, it's not ideal necessarily to go out and study traffic and pedestrian movements given the, the restrictions that we have on so, social distancing and stay at home orders. So this will be, you know, uh, conducted during the optimal time in other words. So, but we do want to get going on it. We, we are getting into the more of the summer season when there are more pedestrians and uh, it will be optimal to, to do this study. Thank you, Director. I, I agree that this is probably not something we want to do right away, but we do need to get it approved so that as we get through this uh, COVID situation that we, we're in, that we can actually get this under uh, taken care of. Any questions from the committee? This is Ryan. I'll move for approval. Second, Dean. All right. Thank you for that motion and support. Alderperson Decker. Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Salagio? 
Aye. Alderperson Sorensen? Aye. And Chair Fodes, aye. So motion approved. 3.5, Resolution 8, 2021. Um, April 21st, 2020, document 3.8, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Cassack Roofing, Inc. Uh, to replace a portion of the roof of the new water treatment building at the water treatment plant and to make ex expenditures uh, related to the roof replacement. Director Beeble. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This project was identified in the 2020 Capital Improvements Program for at our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, as, as the background analysis said, this was you know, last updated in 1980. Uh, there's some asbestos in the roof, and so we need to take some of that back. But the roof's in very bad um, shape at this location between the digesters. And in your packet, there's photos of some of the the work that needs to be done. Uh, and it also gives a diagram of the location of the, the circles between the, what we call the digesters. Um, again, this was in the budget. It's uh, part of the capital improvements program and we're looking to get this work done this summer as uh, construction season is uh, quickly approaching us. Excellent. Any questions from the committee? Uh, because we have talked about this in past discussions. Hearing none, I'm looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Dean. Marcus, second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, Alderperson Decker. Aye. Alderperson Phillips. Aye. Alderperson Salagio. Aye. Alderperson Sorensen. Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion to approve. We'll move on to 3.6. Resolution 9, 2021, April 21st, 2020, document 3.9, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a continuing professional service agreement with Donahue and, and Associates to provide a call engineering services for the wastewater treatment plant. Director Beeble? Yes, the, the, the purpose of this is at, at our wastewater treatment plant, it's um, quite specialized. Uh, quite complicated and, and it, not only its treatment, but its uh, mechanical equipment and other processes. And at times we, we need engineering services, consulting services. Uh, Donahue and Associates has provided engineering services to the plant in the past. And this is mainly for on call, things that come up that were not really, um, were planned in other words, not, not, not necessarily our capital projects those we can plan and we can plan engineering services. This would be for smaller items that pop up and we need their tech, technical expertise occasionally. And what this contract allows us to do is have them uh, kind of on it as a retainer as an as needed basis. Small dollar amount type of contracts anywhere from like 2000 to maybe seven to 10 at the most on a smaller scale type of project is what this would be. Um, again, uh, there's an attached, This it's kind of a, a um, standards professional services agreement that we've uh, had reviewed and um, looking to have your approval so that we're able to enter into this contract with them. So Director Beeble, this is somewhat of a time and materials as needed. C correct. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, looking for a, listening for a motion. I make a motion to approve. Dean. Ryan, second. Thank you for that motion and support. Again, any questions? Hearing none. Alderperson Decker? Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Salagio? Aye. I'm trying. <laughs> Alderperson Sorensen? <laughs> aye. Chair votes aye. Motion approved. 3.7. Resolution 2020-21, May 4th, 2020, document 4.11, uh, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the second amendment to the operating of agreement between the city of Sheboygan and Power Pubs LLC regarding the Sheboygan uh, Beer Garden in Kiwanis Park. Is this going to go to Thomas or? Well, I, I can... I can give you an intro to it, and then if you so desire or you need, we can obviously, we have Joe here this evening as well as Thomas, but 
As um, long as you guys aren't going to drag this out like for nope, a year. No, we're going to. <laughs> the, the item for up for consideration pretty well summarizes it real well. I mean, uh, you know, we, we had some challenges last year, although, you know, we, you know, with the river being high and, uh, you know, it's just a really unfortunate, you know, event in terms of the Lake Michigan affecting the Sheboygan River at this location because um, everything that I've seen was really positive about this and um, good atmosphere. So with that, knowing that it was kind of struggling with, with some of the, the environmental conditions that we faced, uh, Power Pubs has required, you know, requested some, some changes. And Joe, as well as Thomas, and well as the operator, we're, we're all in support of these changes. We think that these changes will ultimately be successful in, in operating. I don't know, Mr. Chairman, if you need me to read the four items, um, but, you know, he was operating, you know, five days a week, and we want to reduce that uh, to like three. So I, it's, I don't want to belabor this. It's all there. It's, it's um, I sure guess if you, you desire, Mr. Chairman, uh, we, we reviewed this, we're supportive of it, and uh, we would entertain you to support this as well. I, per, I thank you, David. I, I support this. I, I think, um, you know, they, they bring a, a great opportunity to the city. I'm hoping that they don't get frustrated, and I'm hoping that we get through the, the situation that we're in right now. It's unfortunate that last year was somewhat difficult for him, but he, he seemed to be very positive. Um, and then we had COVID happen, so I, I totally understand where he's looking to reduce the number of days and, and cost. Um, any comments from the committee? Yes, I, I guess I would echo that. I mean, I, I think that uh, uh, anything we can do to help this gentleman be successful. I mean, I, I, I recognize the difficulties that he had last year with the river being high and everything like that. I mean, it, it seems like there's been a lot against uh, you know, from the outside of with nothing, no control over. Um, but I'd like to see this gentleman have as much uh, of a chance to be successful, and I hope that this helps. Excellent. Any additional comments from the committee? Listening for a, I well, this is just, dis well, it's a discussion only, so I'm oh. sorry. District 5? Yep. No, it's discussion only, sorry. Oh. All right. Uh, we'll move on to 3.8. Oh, no, that is a resolution. Oh, that is a resolution. I, 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 yep. It is, it is up for, it is up for a, a resolution. All right. I'm sorry. My bad. All right. Look, listening for a motion. I think Ryan was going to. I'd move to approve Marcus Savaglio, District 5. Thank you. Second. Sorenson will second. Oh. Thank you, gentlemen, for that motion and support. Any additional questions? Hearing none, Alderperson Decker? Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Savaglio? Aye. Alderperson Sorensen? Aye. And chair, chair votes aye. Motion approved. Sorry about that. All right, 3.8 is a discussion only, and it's the uh, Sheboygan Athletic Club Agreement. Alder, um, <laughs> director people. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, again, Joe's here, and I, if, if, I mean, I, I guess I can just talk, with, just to give you um, an update. As you well know, with the, the, the lighting project, Yep. Uh, the, we loaned the Sheboygan A's money to finance the completion of the lighting project at Wildwood Athletic Complex. And uh, given, given the circumstances of the COVID and not having the ability to have a season, which is their major ultimate revenue source for their concession sales, ticket sales, and so forth, um, what, what they're requesting is, is that they... Um, ex and basically delay their principal payment that was due this year and uh, just pay the interest only for this year. Yep. Um, we, we met as staff. We support this given the, the uh, circumstances. And, you know, ultimately it is our park and they are ultimately our lights, knowing that they're the principal user. And we've had a longstanding great relationship with the Sheboygan A's in the community, um, and we support this delay. Perfect. Thank you, Director Beeble. 
Um, I actually had asked that this comes forward to the committee for discussion just to basically bring it to everybody's attention. Um, I know it was, how many years, was it a couple of years ago, two years ago, that the lights were changed out? Joe? Help. Yeah, 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 but it was done in winter. Yeah, right. So this was a. a Scott Spangle with the A's here. Pardon? Scott Spangle with the A's here. Oh, perfect. Would you like to? Would you like to say something, sir? No, I guess um, I think uh, Director Beeble summed it all up. Um, we are facing some financial concerns going into the season, or season that we may not have. We're still hopeful of playing playing some baseball this year. But um, it's just, it's, in the end, it's going to be very, very limited and maybe without fans. So um, we have a payment due that would uh, complete the payment of the loans due on June 1st, and we're asking to delay that until June 1st, 2021, and make interest-only payments from now or from June 1st on through June 1st of 20, 2021, just to reduce our, uh, our uh, expense burden for the year. Yeah, based Thank on losing our, like Director Beeble said, based on losing our major source of revenue, being the baseball games at Wildwood Park. Thank you. Um, so basically, this is just discussion only, and looking, looking for uh, just to communicate to you to the committee. Um, this will be coming to council, and uh, I'm hoping for that everybody supports this. That they that we'll look at. Um, the understanding that because of the COVID situation that they would just be supportive in interest only. So uh, this, they've done a great job. They've done a lot of additions down there. So hopefully we'll get through this together. Any, qu any questions from the committee? Hearing none, we'll move on to- I'd like uh, to reiterate the relationship that we have with the city. It's been a fantastic one for over 55 years and we're continuing to grow the program and um, we've really appreciated everything the city has done to support our program and bringing baseball to the community. Um, Tom Willis, our, our club treasurer, has joined us as well. I don't know, Tom, if you had any comments? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I mean, we think you know, if we can delay some payments like this, this uh, basically a principal payment for the last payment of our loan for one year that will be in good shape. So we are in good shape now and, and we'll be able to survive through the coronavirus. Thank you, Scott and Tom. Um, I know I, per I personally support this because we do have a great relationship. It's been long going. Uh, you guys are a, a core to the city of Sheboygan and what with what you guys do and what you bring uh, to the city. So I'm sure the committee um, shares that support. Any, any additional questions from the committee or comments before we move on? All right, hearing none, um, I'll move on to 3.9, uh, citywide ADA uh, project presentation. Director Beeble. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can, can the committee see this online? I believe it's being broadcasted. Um, they should be able to see this um, as part of the meeting, but every, all, all the committee members should have received in, in the agenda packet, yep, the, PDF. Uh, the transition plan executive summary. 188 pages or something like that, <laughs> or 17 pages a part of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah 17 <laughs> pages is the exec, executive summary. And then we had the analysis, what is uh, you pages. know 110 pages. And this is just a small fraction of the actual study. I actually have uh, a box in my office about the size of this podium that is full of individual photos and documentation of all the deficiencies throughout uh, the city in terms of public facilities as well as our park areas. That in terms of deficiencies I'm talking about uh, areas of concern for compliance with the ADA. In other words, the American uh, Disabilities Act. Uh, this, this, I have a little slide show, and basically we'll just kind of walk through this. This is going to be, 
you know, a, just a really broad overview uh, for the committee. As you recall, during the capital improvements, we've, starting in 2021, we're allocating or requesting $250,000 on an annual basis moving forward to address these concerns. And, and in, in 2019, the city worked with our, our insurance company, cities, uh, basically the acronym is CIVMIC, Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company. And basically they required us to do really an exact accessibility survey to can be completed under the Title II uh, of the American Disabilities Act. So what does this include? The, 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 this plan that CIVMIC wanted us to do, they, they recommended working with Accel Accessibility Consultation and Training Services Incorporated. They're out of Wheaton, Illinois, and they've done multiple plans for CIVMIC members, such as the city of Sheboygan and other communities in their, in, in their, in their group. Uh, some of the recommendations, they're not all infrastructure. So it talks about we really need to do a comprehensive policy and procedures review for our city. And that could be you know, employment, uh, job descriptions, um, accessibility for meetings, for instance, and agendas, all of that type of stuff. Websites, uh, as you can see, are, are, are another example. One of the big things that came out, and that's really what's driving this, is, that's public works, is the infrastructure and ranking mechanism for how do, we, how do we go through the improvements that we're going to be looking at over the next decade, potentially. The other thing is we talked about, I talked about policies, you know, we talk about the language and registration forms and brochures. All of those have specific requirements under the Title II of the American Disabilities Act that we're going to need to do internally as well. Grievance procedure. What happens if there, someone does, you know, have a, a complaint or a concern that, of the city of, hey, you're not meeting city of Sheboygan, this is my concern. How do, you, how do we address that? How do we um, comprehensively review that and come up with solutions? So that needs to be uh, refined and, and delivered. The other thing is power-driven mobility devices. They're really becoming popular. The cost price for, for them is really becoming, with the technology, more and more available to those necessarily that were handicapped and maybe were confined to a wheel, wheelchair. Now they have the ability to have power-assisted, battery-operated mobility devices. And lastly, service animals. Uh, they're more and more popular. Uh, they're more and more prevalent throughout, throughout the, the, the area. And what's our policy in handling that? Public Works Department, we, you know, we maintain over 40 parks. An overall review of the facilities and parks was, was comprehensively uh, assessed. Parking, walkways, Bathrooms, all of that was part of part of this. This is just an example of Evergreen Park, you know, showing we have a drainage issue. Here's the handicapped spaces, uh, no signs. So, you know, things things that ultimately we need to really concentrate on. Um, it's just not some paint in a in a parking lot. It, we need to do this right. These are just some more examples of of deficiencies. I can, you know, zoom in on here. Here's, you know, trip hazard. Uh, these are, you know, these are facilities that we walk on on a daily basis and use, but you really, you know, you don't notice them until you really, really take a look and look at some of these factors and really get into it um, because they are barriers. And this is really what we need to focus on in terms of being you know, if we're going to continue to be the choice place to live, we need to be accessible for all. Then it goes to our facilities. This is just our, our service building. So service building, you can see our front door. We have a trip hazard and it's not even a power assisted door. So, you know, we're, we're currently not in compliance. Uh, bathrooms, again, um, we're, we're, the building's 50 years old and 
were in need of, of repairs. This is just one example. We have multiple buildings, you know, throughout the city. City Hall, we're fortunate we just did a major renovation, so we're, we're, we're in good shape here. But, you know, we have the senior center. We have other facilities throughout the city that comprehensively we need to undertake and improve. And this is what I was talking about, the, the mobility devices. Uh, they're becoming more and more prevalent, more and more popular. And just at, at our park here, just as a classic example, settling around the park shelter, and it's a trip hazard. You know, for the majority of us, we don't even notice that. We just take it as a step. But if you're having someone in a, in a wheelchair and a mobility device, uh, again, it's, it is a, a, a real concern. So what do we do? We've done a comprehensive inventory. We developed a budget for all of these items. And now we have to prioritize this and start to comprehensively starting attacking these deficiencies. We, we're not going to be able to do this all at once. It's far too expensive. The total budget on this is about $2.5 million. So again, $250,000 a year, it's, you know, it could be a 10-year program. But, but at the same time, on any other city project, we're, we're looking at doing some major cap, capital in, investment at Kiwanis Park. As part of that capital improvement, we're going to do some of these repairs. So we're going to leverage those projects along with this money. So it, it shouldn't take us 10 years, maybe seven, but we're going to con we're, every year we're going to make a concentrated effort to address the these issues and attack them on a prioritized basis. These are just some examples of, of recent projects. The Shaw Family Playground, for instance, once that was a, a great asset, great project, but one of the things we noticed right away after it was installed was uh, the, uh, the, the, the sidewalks and ramps to the, to the park weren't in compliance. So you can see we, we added Handicap, nice detectable warning fields, and the grades are really nice and uh, sloped, real flat. Uh, they're not on a, on, a, on, a, on a pitched or an angle that would be uh, as a barrier as well. So that's an example of taking in a project, leveraging that project, and making the improvement. So as I mentioned, 250000 for the next five years. Uh, we're going to alternate between our our parks issues with the ADA one year, and then the next year we're going to look at our facilities and buildings and grounds. For 2021, we're starting with our parks division so that our parks infrastructure can be improved. And in 2022, uh, the facility infrastructure, such as buildings, will be improved. I know that was a real high level uh, overview, but there we we through this process, and I, as I mentioned, it is a tremendous amount of volume of paper that we received. Mm -hmm. We did get from the consultant uh, just a, a, a general spreadsheet of everything. We've consolidated that, and what's up on the screen this evening is, is we've developed a pivot table to even further drill into the data. Uh, because if you look at all the priority ones, they were priority, all the priority ones together total 1.5 million. Well, we're not going to be able to do all the priority ones, all at once. So now we have to rank the priority ones. And how do we determine which of those is the most important? So we're going to look at criteria, you know, heavy use in the park, the age of the park. Are, are there any other planned improvements within the next five years to this park? Those are all factors that we're going to refine and develop. And then when we go into the 2021 Capital improvements will present to you, based on these criteria, these, these factors, these are our priorities for 2021 for the improvements within our parks. So that's where we're at at this stage. I know it's, I'm throwing a lot at you at high level, but uh, it, it is a very important uh, part of our community, and uh, we need to take it seriously. You know, one of the things that by, by, by not only uh, having this plan. One of the things, you know, in the Sheboygan area is we're, we're, we have a good tourist economy, very good tourist economy. And it's one of the things that outsiders visiting, we need to make sure that our facilities are, are at 
the level they need to be uh, because ultimately it serves a greater good for our community. I'm happy to entertain any questions at this point, but I wanted to give the committee an update and kind of, we talked really briefly during the capital improvements review. This is a little bit more detail. And again, we'll have even further detail as we refine those projects for 2021. Thank you, David. Um, I think this, this is a great project. It's, it's, uh, you're correct. We have so many parks and so many uh, nice places for people to, you know, obviously live, work and play. And so many of our constituents enjoy that. And they, I mean, I have con, uh, constituents that'll reach out to me and tell me when, when they don't like something and that we need to address it. Uh, what we also need to remember is with all the parks that we have, especially during COVID, but um, the, the, uh, the rentals that bring in a lot of um, money for the, for the community also. So we definitely need to make sure that we keep our parks up to date um, as well as our facilities for our employees. So any questions from the committee? All right, hearing none, I'm gonna to move to uh, 3.10, uh, shoreline and river erosion update presentation. Director Beevil. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and again, this is just a continual process of keeping the older persons, the mayor, for instance, and everyone informed of uh, Lake Michigan, the high historic high water levels that we are facing and uh, monitoring the erosion that is occurring on, on Lake Michigan. So we wanted to give you an update with that this evening. So one of the things that we've done is we, we've, we've, we have a drone that we use in our engineering department. We have some, some video footage this evening that I want to just share with you of the shoreline and... Uh, so we're starting on the south end of Sheboygan. This is that's you're looking at the wastewater treatment plant. And I want you to take, you know, take a look at those jetties. Yeah. Because about three years ago you could see sand and you could walk between those on the beach. And so the water is that high now. It's right at in which you, I'm gonna pause it real quick. Right now the water is 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 right at this rock ledge, okay? This, this basically this revetment, this, the shoreline, that was put in roughly some of the, the, the main rock was reestablished in the, in the late 80s, the last time the lake was so high because of severe erosion. The jetties actually were put in in 1930s. So they've been there a long time. Uh, but nevertheless, um, the water is above its what's called its ordinary high water mark. So when we have what we have heavy winds and wave action, it's it's going up and beyond and onto that sandy area, and a lot of that is rock that is uh, beyond beyond the uh, main rip rap, the main shoreline, and that was mainly for an access road. This is the area where we have our south side interceptor sewer, so it's running all along this lakeshore here. In fact, I'll be able to find a couple, of, I'll, I'll, I'll advance the slide um, again, and right there, there's a manhole. That's for sanitary sewer that runs along the lakeshore, and you can imagine in high waves, they're going right over the top of that. And that's one of the things that we're concerned. We, we're entered under contract. We're doing engineering. And at this point, the good, the good news is that that line's in good condition and it can be lined. It doesn't have to be replaced. It's still a very expensive project. As I mentioned, you know, it's $13.9 million project just to do the rehab. But if we had to replace that line, we're talking, you know, 20, 30, maybe $40 million, it, it, it would have been very expensive. So one of the things that we went through this footage here is you can see we're, we're holding our own. Yeah, the, the bluff, uh, even though the water during, during heavy in, in, in high winds, wave action, again, here's another manhole, and it's on its little peninsula right there. 
So during high wave action, you can imagine waves and it's splashing on the bottom of the slope. Now in this area, you can see we get, we get some pretty good vegetation. That's a good thing. Vegetation helps stabilize the slope, helps, helps control that erosion. So I'm going to advance because this is a long video. I'm going to skip ahead. And Director Beeble, while we're watching this video, who owns, just to help the committee understand, because I, I have constituents, obviously, in my district that live on the, along the lake here, and I've had constituents begging for the city to do something. Um, I've had a couple of constituents offer to assist to pay for the rip rock yep. in front of their, their property, but they, a lot of the homeowners don't realize you know, what the city owns, what the city doesn't own, what right. they own. Could you explain a little bit? Sure, and, and, and that's, that's a good, good question. And all, all of this area along here is, is city owned. Where, where, where we get, the, where the property ends is typically right at the top of the slope where the pointer is going along up here. So the city owns the bank, the toe of the slope, uh, and basically to the ordinary high water mark is, what is, is the term that we, we, we refer to. So if, the, so if the constituent has what I'll call a landslide from erosion, they lose their yard to the city? Correct. Okay. Now, as you can see again, what we're showing here, this is where a substantial amount of work was done in the late 80s. This, they built basically an access road along for this, this area. So again, in this area, um, we're, in, we're in good, good condition. You know, advance it, get, you know, this is, that's King Park. You can see there's not much beach left. In fact, you can see some structures there with the rock around it. Here we have some substantial beach that is still remaining between Blue Harbor and King Park. This is the former Pent Air property we're approaching. And Director Beeble, none of that has any of that rip rock. Is that because it's been it's, able to maintain the, the sand? There, there it is, because is, no, it's flat. There's no, there's no bluffs, okay. so it's nice and gradual, and that's, why, and that's where you're seeing the wave action build up sand. Okay. Uh, because it's nice and flat, it it will erode it will erode sand from the beach and high wave action. But in, in gentle wave action, it actually builds the beach. Okay. So we get to the Blue Harbor area, and I'm going to pause it right here because you know this area actually had beach about three or four years ago. And it was very popular with the Blue Harbor patrons. And as of today, you can see it's all underwater and we're experiencing some advanced erosion, especially in this location you can see. And we have other photos I'll get moving on. I wanna to get to the north side of Sheboygan. Thank you. This is the north side beach. Still no riprap here because it's flat in this area. As you continue to advance, we start to get a little bluff. We have the protection of the jetties. Again, there was much more beach here about four or five years ago than it is today. And you get into these, this area up by North Point, much more rock. And again, we're, we're experiencing erosion, especially right along this area here. We've, we've had uh, quite a bit of damage. We're looking at plans to try to replace and, and, sh and strengthen these areas as well as in this area. You can see it's, it's not much for waves to lap up, especially as in, a, in a severe wind and a storm in di uh, condition. And we've had a close Broughton Drive a couple of times Multiple already because times. of that, because of flooding and, and dangerous conditions. So we're now on the north side and we're coming up and we, we, we do have some erosion up here. Can't even see North Point anymore. That used to be like a lot of concrete. So yeah. in this area, this is, the, this is the North Point Overlook. And it's right next to the water treatment plant. But you can see we've lost some of the bank here. Not much rock. It's pretty steep there. It was the area that 
uh, prior to this, it really doesn't have any infrastructure for us to protect, and um, it was pretty much unprotected for, for decades. This is the water, water, uh, water plant, and you can see, it, you know, we're working and talking with Joe Trueblood up here. We, we're, you know, we're, it's, it's pounding, and uh, this area is really exposed, and we've had some pretty good storms, and, and we know we have a, a, a major project coming up with the water intake, but there may be some in, interim or immediate needs that we're going to have to strengthen this in and get this repaired sooner than later. Volref Park here at the bottom. Again, you can see, you can see uh, branches and trees and stumps that get just thrown up on the shore. Now this area, okay, we're going north of the water filtration plant. This area, again, you can, if you see, we have good rock on, on nice normal conditions. We're, we're, we're protected. It's, you know, when we have those storms and we get those easterly strong winds, waves five, six, seven, eight feet, they're going to crash over the top. That, and again, we're at historic Lake Michigan high water mark in its 100 plus years of history of tracking Lake Michigan. So as we're coming on, this is, this is North 3rd Street. Director Beeble, this video was taken May 6th. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So you can see in this area we have we have some storm, we have some sanitary sewer as well, and, and you can see the rock is a little bit more substantial in this area. So, David, if I could just kind of interrupt, this is Alderman Sorensen. Um, so, what I guess what, what's the plan moving forward with with a lot of this erosion that we're seeing? I know I represent part of the South Shore, and I, I'm getting some communication from folks. You know, they they see um, their water levels rising, and a lot of their their um, the land by their house falling into the lake. So, so yeah. in terms of like, what are we looking at? Are we looking at yeah. putting more riprap in certain areas? Are we looking at I don't know. I, I've had suggestions about putting new jetties or repairing the jetties or something along those lines. I, do you, are you guys thinking about anything like that or what? What's right. On, and on our radar? So I, the, the, the purpose of the video, first of all, was just to kind of show you, give you a broad overview. And right now, we're, 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 we're in good, good condition compared to a lot of other lakeshore communities. If you see, yes, we've had some soil loss along the lakeshore. But there is really no homes that are immediately impacted in terms of danger with it coming up or their homes teetering on any edges. This, this area is probably one of the worst areas. It's on the very north, and it's not even, I don't believe, in the city of Sheboygan, but it's on the lakeshore. And you can see this is an area where there's no rock, and it's just exposed. So we've had some, we've had some erosion in there. But... And as you'll see as we get into this presentation, it's not all necessarily from wave action. And then this last, last section of the video shows, this is at the Weiss subdivision on the very tip of the peninsula by the Pigeon River where it discharges into Lake Michigan. This is an area where we have, there's no shore, rock shore or anything, but you can see there's quite a bit of loss, but it's, again, wooded, uh, we've lost a tree. There's no structures, no, no buildings that are being impacted as of today. 
There is a house. It does show this. There's a house here. But again, look at the shore, look at the protection. Look at the vegetation. There no loss of embankment whatsoever. Is it is it nerve wracking? I can totally understand, and I and I get that. And again, we're at historic levels, so if we can get to the the presentation, what, this is what we're planning on doing. Our, just like the ADA plan, if you imagine imagine that we have millions of dollars of projects, we're going to need to prioritize. We have literally miles of shoreline to protect. And the city owns much of that. So what, what is the city's obligation? Well, what, what we're doing and what we've, we've talked about is what we've done is with the pr approach we've, we're taking is our first and foremost is those critical infrastructure facilities that need protection first. So we talk about the sanitary sewer. We talk about the water utility. We talk about those public areas along Broughton Drive. Private property along the embankment is going to be secondary. We don't have all the resources and money to protect this entire shoreline. We are looking at individuals and we can work with them. And if, they're, if, if a property owner so desires to do added protection, we would work with them. We would have easements. We could coordinate with them. We could help them with permitting. But as a, as a department, it's not going to be our primary focus. And again, it's, it's the, the loss that we've seen along the shoreline is, is more, um, again, nothing structural. It's, it's, it's soil loss. And again, it's not all contributed from wave action. And we'll, we'll get into this real quick. I got the slide. That's right. I'm, I'm controlling it. So again, I showed the, the, the treatment plant. And again, we, we, for the most part, even though this is historic high water, it's not to the very bottom of the bank. It's to the rocks. I'm going to show you this, this example here. And I want you to really focus Look at that, that where the pointer is by the sidewalk for the King Park Pavilion. This was just in four years ago. A little less, actually, in September. Look where the water is today. That's his, I mean, we're, we're dealing with uh, historic, and I mean historic, levels. This is Blue Harbor in 17. This is that area where I said, oh, they had a beach. They had a beach here. A lot of their people were using that. Again, kind of focus on that condo. I'm a little bit too far north. Sorry about that. If I go back, if you look at, look at where <coughs> the uh, pool is, but you can see this is the erosion that's starting to occur. I mean, it's, 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 that's, it's out there and it's happening. This is another shot of that erosion that we're, we're looking at. So looking at the north side shoreline, King, uh, north side beach, d -Land beach. If you look, look at the volleyball courts back in 16, today, it's right there. It's, uh, so again, we've lost a tremendous amount of beach. North Point. There's, we've talked, we talked about the erosion next to the, the water utility. This is our lift station. This is a major lift station that collects a, a tremendous amount of sewage from the north side of the city that then will pump it to the south side of Sheboygan. Again, this is a critical facility. Our first and foremost concern is protecting these public infrastructure facilities. This is an example of a private resident that has, you know, some soil loss. But their properties, as you can see, are far, far set back and, and, and protected. We're monitoring these situations, and if there's a major slough or a major concern, we will clearly work with those property owners and, and work with them for protective measures. But as of today, we're, we're, in, good, we're in good condition. This is the shoreline at Northeast Park. Again, moving forward, this is 506 Grand Avenue. 
moving north. This is, again, that, the property that I showed that has pretty good uh, soil erosion. You know, there's not much vegetation on that slope, is there? There's not many trees, not much roots to control erosion. That's another factor. It's not all wave action. There's groundwater that is contributing. 2019 was one of the wettest years, again, on record. Not only in Lake Michigan being high, but also just rainwater in, our, in, our, in, in, Lake, in, in Wisconsin as well as the city of Sheboygan. So what do you see? You see some of these areas here. These, this is seepage, groundwater, that's coming through the bank. And why is that important? Because it, can it creates an unstable condition that can cause these uh, slopes to erode. And down on the bottom of the slope is from wave action. Again, here's a, here's a public infrastructure concern. This is the Eisner Avenue outfall. Uh, basically, the pipe is uh, eroded away, and we need to protect that and control it. Because right now, we have our, our storm sewer outfall that's just eroding more and more bank. The pipe's gone. We need to extend that bank and provide large riprap and, and control. And this is the last, you know, we had this picture before of, of no, no shoreline protection. So this is, this, is an ex this is right out of the United States Army Corps of Engineers living on the lake, uh, living on the coast, basically, uh, guidelines. And it talks about these, these scenarios that can happen with the lakefront properties. We have surface water comes over the top that is a concern. Here's that groundwater seepage um, outflow. We have the sloughs of or in sliding and then the toe erosion. We saw some of those examples in the pictures. This is a cross section of basically, if you took, took a knife and sliced it like a piece of cake, this is where we have groundwater flow that can, that causes those seepage and that seepage, seepage ends up sloughing the, the bank as well as the lake, uh, the wave action from the lake. This is just another example. Again, this shows where if you keep vegetation, you keep roots, it helps stabilize that bank. And I understand living on the lake, you want to have a view, but you also need to balance that with vegetation and maintaining that structural integrity. Lastly, this is just another uh, basic example of how we can manage some of this. You know, you vertical wells intercept that groundwater flow, you know, putting in trenches, diverting that water, that seepage, as well as the riprap at, at the bottom of the slope to stabilize. But this, these are expensive solutions. The, this isn't stuff that we can just implement overnight. We're talking millions of dollars of infrastructure. So I, the, the main thing is I, I wanted to show with this presentation tonight that we are experiencing historic high water levels, but yet we're in pretty good condition. We're in pretty good shape. I'm not saying it's great. We're going to have some damage, and we've experienced some damage. But I wanted to, to at least give you as a committee and as well as the older persons is that we need to prioritize how we address the public's concern. And I understand private property interests and their concern of protecting their, their property, their, their shoreline, their, their embankment. But at the same time, we need to prioritize and be good stewards of the money that we have as taxpayers and how we manage that for the city in terms of protecting that infrastructure, as I demonstrated in the slides, using that as our first and foremost priority but working with those property owners on an individual basis and working with them of their concerns and trying to come up with solutions ultimately to reassure them and, and, and in some points, uh, in some cases, try to help mitigate or protect their, their embankment if they're experiencing more loss. So I, I know it's a lot to throw at you. I probably was a little fast, but it's a tremendous um, problem that I don't see, it. it's going to be here for several years. Um, as fast as the water went up, I don't see it going down as fast as it, it, it came up. It's going to be around, and we're going to be facing the, this dilemma for some many years to come. Thank you, Director Beeble. Um, 
just to add a, a few comments of, of my own, I know I've had constituents that have called me and had me walk the banks with them in, in desperation of asking what, what can the city do. And in talking with them, um, the majority of the people that I, I've dealt with that live on the lake that have called me and had me come, they've been there for a long time. They've lived in these homes prior to the 80s. So they remember when the water was low, when the water was high. And, you know, for them, it's, it was more of the ability to vent and communicate that, hey, please help us. And they understood that, you know, the money's not there. And a couple of them even said, hey, could we, could we work with the city and somehow figure out how to invest in the riprap and stuff like that? So maybe that's something that we need to look at as a but city. And, and by all means, is, I, I, I think we, we, would, we would entertain that if right. we have... Uh, uh, property owners that are willing to work and willing to help, uh, we would work with them and either through through helping with permitting uh, and access right. and how do we coordinate that? Um, we're, we're here to we're here to serve and we're here to help and we, we we the point I'm trying to make is I'm not we're not we're not turning a blind eye to their concerns because we we're, we are concerned and but what we're trying to demonstrate is that. We're at a point yet where I th it's good to listen to the concerns, but we, we want to also reassure that we're not at a point where this is catastrophic, and we can do some things in the meantime to prevent that. And if we can work together, by all means, we, we, we support that, and we, we would welcome that. Right. And, and uh, the constituents that I talked with also identified the fact that these problems are not just Sheboygan, Sheboygan County. It's everybody along you know, the lakefront, basically. So you hear about Milwaukee, you hear about Chicago. So I guess the other question I would ask the, you know, the, the group is if there are grants or state or federal money that, you know, our community could get a hold of yeah. or apply for, I would, I would ask that we try. And, and, and we will. And, we, and in fact, we are as of we're looking at, for instance, looking at that south side interceptor. Yep. We're looking at federal grants to tap into that program. And, and in a lot of cases, that's where the money will go. It will go to protect the public infrastructure first. Right. Uh, that's what their first priority is. But that also then will help us maybe shift then money if we save on getting grants for our own projects that might free up some money then to apply to some areas of concern that may be fronting residential properties. Right, perfect. Any questions from the committee? Can I just make a comment? Yes, please. First, I just wanted to say thank you, David, for that drone footage. I think that was really helpful to have that perspective of the entire shoreline. And then I just thought it was a good opportunity just to mention, because um, you, you talked about the importance of trees and established root systems to support the shoreline. Um, and last year, I was really surprised and disappointed to see that we removed a huge percentage of the woody species down by King Park. King Park is in my neighborhood. I take my kids there often. And I wasn't aware that it was going to happen, so it was quite surprising to me. And first thing, one of the first things that came to mind was erosion issues. So I just, I hope that we're mindful in the future when we make those kind of decisions. And I would hope that it might come to the DPW committee for discussion. Director Beeble, uh, in reference to what um, Alder Phillips is referencing, isn't that, wasn't that uh, done by a, an actual group in taking out uh, some of the evasive species? It, and aren't they coming back to actually plant um, species that is actually f native to our area? Right, and, 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 and we did take out some woody around, around King Park, but there was also uh, a beach nourishment plan as well as dune grasses. Because of the topography there is flat, mm -hmm. we wanted to increase the dune grasses in this area, which uh, prior to the high lake level was really taken off. And, and as you can see, you know, unfortunately now it's gone, but, I, but I'll have this available. Uh, if you go north of King Park, you can see where the, the natural 
uh, succession of dune grasses was, was really starting to take, take hold in this area. So, but, but we, I, I, I appreciate the feedback from, from Alder Phillips and we'll, we'll, we'll continue to, to address those concerns. And, and again, you're right, some of them were, were, were evasive and, and some were ash and just not in good condition. But again, it was part of establishing some of the dune grasses that, that we were able to establish. Thank you. I know um, just ex expanding a little bit on the, uh, on the erosion situation, several of the constituents that had brought it to my attention that complained about the erosion also had cut down trees along the lake so they had a better view. So when I pointed that out and then they would, you know, debate me on the fact that they planted something but they were like small flowers and small, small bushes, it's like the, what they don't realize is that a tree's roots and, and um, Alder Phillips can jump in if I say this wrong, but typically a root system is as big above or below as, as the tree is above kind of thing. So there, a tree holds a lot more dirt than a, a bush. Right. And, and, there, and I think, there, and again, I think it's one of these situations that for years it wasn't an issue because the lake was down and right. it was a kind of, you know, it's, it's that cyclical, uh, cycle, of cycle that we're, we're faced with and it's like flood control you know we don't have any problems it's you know it's dry and we're good and then all of a sudden the flood comes along and what are you going to do we got to do all this work and then it goes away and people start forgetting and yep. um, it comes back but you're right I, I think there's there's a there's a way mean where we can encourage you know trees and, and stabilization but yet still allow for beautiful vistas and views of the lake Thank you, Director. Any additional questions from the committee? Thank you again, Director uh, Beevil, for the presentation. Um, I'll move on to 4.1. Next meeting uh, is, we're, we're scheduling it, is uh, May 26th. So hopefully everybody can make that. If you can't make it, please let uh, Dawn and myself know. And uh, moving into 5.1, looking for a, listening for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Marcus Savaglio, District 5. Thank you for that motion and support. Any additional questions? Second. Hearing none, Alder Decker? Aye. Alder Phillips? Aye. Alder Savaglio? Aye, with a silent G. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alder Sorensen? Aye. And chair votes aye, we are adjourned. Thank you.